Welcome to episode 173 of Angela Watson's Truth for Teachers. I'm your host, Angela Watson, and I'm here to speak life, encouragement, and truth into the minds and hearts of educators and get you energized for the week ahead. Today, I'm talking with Dr. Ilana Nankin from the organization Breathe for Change. We'll be talking about teacher tools for well being and mindfulness. You can visit truthforteachers.com to get the transcript or find our new Truth For Teachers podcast community on Facebook. You can share your thoughts on the show there and reflect with other listeners in our private group. A big thanks to Advancement Courses for sponsoring today's show. Advancement Courses offers over 200 online PD courses in 19 different subject areas for graduate credit and CEUs for K-12 teachers. And right now, they're donating 10% of every purchase to fund Donors Choose Projects. You can submit your Donors Choose Project for them for a chance to get funded until September 27th. To learn more, visit advancementcourses.com truth. I am excited to introduce you today to Dr. Ilana Nankin. She describes herself as an unstoppable entrepreneur, an award-winning teacher educator and researcher, and a passionate former public school teacher. Her work is in creating a more socially just and conscious world for teachers, students, and entire school communities. So as you can tell, Ilana has major ambitions, and she's just a really uh, energetic person to talk to. I think you're going to love hearing her. Ilana conducted a dissertation study as part of her PhD program that brought teachers around the world together to pioneer new ways to overcome stress and burnout. And her research revealed the critical connection between teacher well-being and student learning. And that's something that I think we're not talking about enough in education. Ilana then founded Breathe for Change in January 2015, and she created the world's only 200-hour wellness and yoga training that is specifically for educators. Since then, Breathe for Change has certified about 3,000 educators as wellness champions, and they are now positively impacting hundreds of thousands of kids and community members throughout the country and really throughout the world, and they're just getting started. Ilana's going to tell you more about the resources available for you through Breathe for Change, and everything is available at breatheforchange.com. There are monthly webinars, videos, curriculum, trainings, lots of different things, and all of it is either free or priced affordably for school. So let's jump in. Ilana, tell me about what you've learned through your research and experience about the connection between teacher well-being and student learning. So my, it, this really all started with my own experience as a pre-K teacher in San Francisco. So when I was teaching, I was so stressed and overwhelmed and overworked, and that's when I first found yoga and these wellness practices, and it completely transformed my own life and my well-being. And I ended up integrating so many of the practices into my classroom with my kids and just saw remarkable transformations in them, like social, emotionally, and academically. And I was like, there is something going on here that needs to be further explored and shared with the world. So I ended up pursuing my PhD in curriculum and instruction at University of Wisconsin. And my research with teachers only further revealed how universal the issue of teacher stress and burnout truly is and how powerful these wellness and social emotional learning practices can truly be for both teachers and students lives and it was through like living and breathing these diverse teacher stories from around the world and seeing them start to implement some of these wellness practices that i was teaching them it was just so clear i was like nothing's gonna stop me I'm starting an organization that aims to enhance the health and well-being of teachers, students, and entire school communities. And that was in January 2015, and that's really how and when Breathe for Change was born. Well, I know the need for this work is so, so great. So I'm, I'm just so excited to have you share this stuff with, uh, yeah. with our listeners. Um, one, one pathway to teacher well-being that um, Breathe for Change focuses on is mindfulness. Can you mm-hmm. talk to us about what that practice looks like for educators? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, one of the things that is so often under-prioritized in education is, is educators' self-care and their well-being. And 
we in Breathe for Change, we think about mindfulness as, you know, the, this present moment awareness and gaining these tools and practices to be able to show up fully as, as yourself in the moment, to be able to take these like deep breaths um, when you may want to react uh, and, and just take a pause to respond. Like how can you bring mindfulness into every interaction that you have? And I think one of the powerful things about the work that we do at Breathe for Change is that we're not just teaching teachers uh, how to bring mindfulness into the classroom with their students. We're teaching them how to embody these practices for themselves, whether it's through uh, mindful listening, or it's through mindful eating, or it's through mindful communication. It's If our teachers aren't embodying them for themselves, and there's no way that our kids are going to walk away with these tools and practices that are authentic and real and that can actually transform their lives and their academic success and their just overall success as human beings. And so in throughout our entire 200-hour wellness and yoga training, we are constantly uh, focusing teachers' attention on how to become more mindfully aware of how they're showing up in the world and ultimately how that impacts their relationships in their communities. I really think that is the missing piece because so often when we look at, you know, curriculum, it's like the teacher, there's no focus on who is the person showing up in this classroom? How is that person mm -hmm. feeling? You know, we can teach kids these kinds of, you know, conflict resolution and, um, you know, all the, uh, you know, socio-emotional strategies and stuff. But if we're showing up, and we haven't um, unpacked our own biases, if we haven't dealt with our own trauma, if we're not getting rest and sleep, if we're not taking care of our bodies, then we're not modeling that for kids. And it's not going to show up in an authentic way. It's going to become one more thing on the plate that you have to teach kids how to do rather than this is who I am. This is how I live. This is how I manage everything. And I want to share that with students because it's a real life skill. So I love what you're saying there about embodying these practices. Totally. And that's like in Breathe for Change, we've sort of coined our social emotional learning curriculum as instead of just SEL, we tag on the F to SEL, which spells self, social emotional learning and facilitation, because we believe it's so critically important for teachers to be living and breathing these practices that we're here to teach our students. And if we're not doing the work for ourselves, then that diminishing cycle of our own well-being is going to negatively impact the way that we're showing up for our students, which will have huge ripple effects, which is exactly what my dissertation research revealed. And then what my ongoing interactions and trainings with thousands of teachers are, are showing across the country. I know one pathway to teacher well-being that, that you support is teachers practicing yoga. Can you talk mm -hmm. about some of the benefits with that and how this can be helpful? Oh, absolutely. So yeah, at Breathe for Change, we run the world's only 200-hour wellness and yoga teacher training that's specifically for educators. So teachers leave our 18-day training as certified yoga instructors, except for our, what sets us apart is our curriculum is completely aligned and uh, supports educators. Like So everything is through the lens of education and social-emotional learning. And the reason why Breathe for Change like lives at the intersection of yoga and education and social justice is because yoga is not just about the asana or the physical practice of yoga. Right. It's about how like yoga in and of itself means union. It's like that alignment with your inner and your outer world. It's how you show up to every single moment. And there's like philosophical underpinnings of the practice of yoga. And there's, you know, meditation is a part of the practice of yoga. There's, it really encompasses uh, so much more than just what you think of like warrior two, for example, mm -hmm. or dancer's pose. And what we've found is that when teachers are practicing the, whether it's the physical practice of yoga that like opens their door to this self-care practice, or whether it's the um, ethical and emotional aspects of yoga that bring them in, or whether it's um, the spiritual aspects that open their door to realize the importance of self-care 
the the practice of yoga is life changing and there's you know physiological benefits you know shows to reduce uh reduce stress it enhances overall performance it reduces um you know chances of heart attack or blood pressure issues and you know the the research is all over the place and it's growing that it shows the physiological and psychological benefits of yoga. And as it relates to education, you know, teachers are living and in such a stressful environment all the time. There's so many uh, to-do lists to check off. There's standards they need to meet. Uh, They're, you know, trying to support their diverse students who are coming into the classrooms with such unique challenges every single day. And they're not equipped with tools and like practices to be able to center them and ground them and support them in responding rather than reacting, then you, we're going to see the issue of teacher burnout and the retention issues only in, increase, which is not what we need or what we want or what's going to support our kids. And so the practice of yoga as a self-care practice is huge for teachers. And then we're also seeing the benefits of um, on our students too. So when teachers are practicing it, like me, they're like, oh my gosh, like I can inc- integrate mindful movement into my classroom for transitions. Or maybe I do three collective breaths with my kids when they come in from recess. And, or, you know, we can you know, share these beautiful nonviolent communication practices or other communication tools that will support us in our learning. And so when teachers are practicing yoga um, in the whole sense of the word, including the physical, they're also more likely to realize the power of, of, of integrating these practices in the classroom. Do you think it's important for teachers to establish their own practices um, uh, of well-being, uh, such as mindfulness or yoga, first before inter- introducing them to students? 100%. And that's why like our curriculum We have this transformational progression. We start our trainings with a focus on transformation of self so that teachers can first and foremost enhance their own well-being and prioritize their own self-care. And then from that foundation of well-being within ourselves as educators, then we move into transformation of relationships. How can I show up fully and enhance well-being in all of my relationships? whether that's my relationships Mm -hmm. with my students, my relationships with my colleagues, my relationships with my own family, my kids' families, you know, the list goes on. And then from that foundation of well-being within myself and my relationships, then we can talk about, okay, how can we utilize wellness, social emotional learning, yoga, what have you, as vehicles for social change within our entire communities, whether that's our school community, our larger communities, And so I think it has to start with a self. And I've seen many social emotional learning scripted curriculum handed to teachers and, you know, teach empathy. And they're like stressed out. They're overwhelmed. They are so not in a place of like, they're so not experiencing empathy within themselves. It's like, how can you teach a child to be empathetic? if you're coming on hot and you are angry, like that's not going to work. And so the teachers have to have these practices, um, you know, hopefully as a daily practice and a, and a, and a clear intention in their lives, because we all know that when, when we're doing something and we believe so wholeheartedly and we feel and are living the benefits, then we're so much more authentic in our teaching of it. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why teachers, have to embody and practice practice mindfulness yoga any form of wellness in order to be effectively in order to effectively teach this to our students Mm -hmm. yeah it really does start with us and it's taken me honestly a lifetime to really (laughs) figure that out because totally (laughs) so so much of the conditioning is around taking care of others right you know child the children first it's all about the students and so you know, when we find something that can benefit kids, it, it just like immediately lets you know, get this prepackaged curriculum, take it right into the classroom, right with kids. And the piece of, of actually embodying it, of actually showing yeah. up as this whole healed person makes all the difference in the world. Like, you, you know, you, you, it's so much more authentic that way because you're speaking from your own experience and you, you've seen the power of it yourself. 
And I know that, you know, for yoga, for example, I just got started with that. Um, it's been almost a year now. Aww. It was something that um, I really resisted for a long time. I just didn't think it was for me. For one thing, I thought it was like a religious thing. And I didn't, I didn't know how that, like, I just didn't get it. Like the whole, it just maybe seemed a little woo woo. I don't know. Oh, um, me too. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, like I just, I didn't get it. And then I started to explore it a little bit. And I, and I realized, okay, first of all, there's a lot of different types of yoga. There's stuff that's much more focused on the physical benefits and it's very active. There's stuff that's much more contemplative and meditative. There's, you know, stuff that gives you a workout and gets your heart rate up. There's stuff that's very relaxing. So it's almost like whatever your personality type is, whatever your mood is, there are practices that can support that. And um, it, it just, it took me a long time to sort of open to that. And now I'm, I can't imagine not having yoga in my life. It's been so transformative. Totally. And so many of the teachers that come to our training have never practiced yoga before. They're mm -hmm. new to the practice just like you. And for my own personal, it, like in my own journey, I, didn't, I found it my first year when I was a hot mess. I was so stressed. I was crying every day. And my roommate would come home who was also a teacher and say something like, uh, or, or I would say to her like, why do you look so blissed out? Like, mm -hmm. what is going on with you? She's like, come to yoga with me. I was like, I don't do yoga. <laughs> like, no, I'm an athlete. I don't do that. And then it, she just kept coming home in this state of presence. And I was coming back just overwhelmed completely. And one day I just gave in and said, fine, I'll go. And it was absolutely life-changing. You feel the benefits right away. And so many of the teachers that come to breathe for change aren't like practicing or haven't been practicing yoga for 20 years and can do headstands. It's, you know, they're drawn to it because they're seeking something that can support them in, in, in really addressing some of the challenges that they're facing and the stresses that they're facing or that their kids are facing. And they, just open themselves to experience the benefits and it's, it's transformational. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited that you found <laughs> the practice too. And it looks so different for everybody. Yes. And there's no one way to practice yoga. And really what we always try to do is make the practice as inclusive and accessible for everybody. I really love that it's, there's no like right way to, to, to practice yoga. And it really opened me up to being in tune with my body a lot more because I'm a person who tends to get lost in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> and yeah. And I'm just, it's, it's hard for me when it, when I think about like tapping into my intuition and noticing what my body needs. Um, that's always been really tough for me. I just sort of power through until things break down. And then I'm like, why am I such a mess? Like, why am I exhausted? Why does my back hurt? What's going on? Because I really wasn't tuning into my body along the way. And yoga really taught me how to do that. It taught me how to just notice, notice how I'm showing up each day, notice what feels good, what doesn't feel good, and work with that instead of working against it and trying to force yourself to keep going through. It's just, it's, it's just been a really transformative mindset. Totally. And as as educators, we're such, like you were saying before, we're such givers. We mm -hmm. want to give, give, give to everyone else, to our students, to our communities. It's like our natural state of being. And it, what I, where I think we can get into trouble is we give so much of ourselves that we forget to give that same love and nurturing and support to ourselves. Yes. So it starts inside with us and then... Yeah when we are healed and whole and healthy, then we're able to make the change that we want. And I really appreciate that Breathe for Change focuses on teacher and student wellness as this vehicle for social change. Yes. And I'm wondering if you can share a little bit more about how these practices cultivate equity and inclusion. Mm, it's like my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, first of all, when you look at the um, current state of the United States as it relates to these practices, most of like yoga and wellness spaces, spaces are really inaccessible, especially to communities that are um, underserved or that aren't like middle to upper class. And so the people who have access to these practices in our communities are not, it's, it's definitely inequitable. And so when we think about using wellness as a vehicle for social change, a lot of it is about uh, making 
integrating inclusive practices and these wellness practices into communi communities that don't have currently have access. But I think the piece that is like the most important, um, and we're taught, we always talk about this through the lens of equity and inclusion and, and diversity is that as you know, our communities no we don't have the answer for what's needed. Like we're not coming in to be like, have like the savior complex and try and we don't have the answers of what the community needs to experience well-being. The community holds those answers. And so how can we uh, create space so we can co-create a vision of what well-being looks like in our communities and be able to share these practices in a way that is culturally responsive and trauma-informed and inclusive for the diverse communities that we're serving. And that's gonna to look totally different in my classroom in San Francisco, for example, than it would in your classroom, than it would in a different educational space. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking this lens of not like one size fits all approach, because that's not gonna work. And it, we have to be able to um, create Build, like build community, foster vulnerability, and co-create learning in a way that uh, supports the voices and people within the communities that we're in. And I think that's like one of the things that is so important and also too often missed in conversations around wellness. Mm -hmm. What resources do you have available through Breathe for Change to support teachers in implementing the things that we talked about? Oh, with so many. Well, first of <laughs> all, we have our um, our two hundred hour wellness and yoga training, and and through that training, educators get like a lifetime supply <laughs> of of resources. Everything from our social emotional learning and facilitation, our SELF curriculum and manual to our um, yoga and meditation manuals. So teachers walk away from our 200 hour unbelievably equipped to be leaders and wellness champions in their communities of this work. But then we also do, uh, we're partnering with schools, districts, and organizations to do shorter trainings, uh, you know, at the school level, at the district level, at the organizational level, where we'll do two-day trainings, one-day trainings, half-day trainings, you know, coaching and consulting. And we have a wide range of um, resources and curriculum that teachers and, can, and community leaders can use to facilitate mindfulness and wellness experiences and social-emotional learning um, in their communities, both with kids and adults. And then we just launched our uh, change maker program for 2019 and 20. And this is a free program for both our wellness champions, our, our grads of our 200 hour, as well as every single educator around the world and community leader who wants access to our content. And so every single month we have a different theme. Um, this theme, because it's September, it's the beginning of the school year is breathe for beginnings. And so we have digital content that we give out from like, you know, different social emotional learning strategies, uh, like three collective breaths or chime time or mindful listening, accountability buddies, like different practices that teachers can use for themselves and their kids and their communities. And then we also have self-care practices that they can use and yoga videos and guided meditations and different mindful hip hop songs that uh, teachers can use with kids in the classroom. There's so many different pra uh, practices and tools and strategies that we're giving out for free because we really want to make this accessible. And then on top of that, I'm doing monthly webinars um, for our grads and then a separate one for any educator um, or really any human being around the world who wants to learn more effectively how to use and integrate our content into their lives and their teaching. And so, um, yeah, there's lots of different ways that we have access and we're trying to make ourselves as available and accessible as possible so that everyone can get a taste of the magic. So information on all those different resources is at breatheforchange.com? Yes. Okay. So you can, you can find our 200 hour application there. You can fill out like a professional development interest form if you want to bring us to your schools or your districts or organizations. 
Um, there, you can sign up for our change maker program, which gives you access to all that content and the monthly webinars that I lead. Yeah, all of that is on our website. Is the 200 hour program held in different locations? Yeah, we're in about 11 cities running our 200 hour trainings. If someone's listening to this and they're interested in the 200 hour, is there a way to help them get funding for that? Yeah. So one of the, one of our key missions at Breathe for Change is to make our trainings as affordable and accessible to educators as possible. And um, our trainings are already um, discounted in comparison to other 200 hour trainings that are out there for yoga. And then we also offer needs-based scholarships for those who need additional funding given their specific circumstances. We also help uh, teachers find access to professional development funds or other sources of funding um, in their communities. And that looks different for depending on what school you're at, what district you're at, um, what funding sources are available locally or nationally, but we do our best to support the teachers in finding that. And then we also um, encourage our teachers to use platforms like Donors Choose or GoFundMe and we'll help them kind of create those projects for them so that they can gain, get some more funding uh, if the other sources of funding don't work. I love that. This is so awesome, Alana. I know this is going to be a game changer for a lot Aww. of teachers listening. I am so excited to help so. spread the word. I want all of you to do it. Do, do it, do it, do it. It is so, so life-changing. And I think one thing that I didn't mention that I think is just so top of mind for me is that, you know, teachers that take Breed for Change, they, they're, they leave, you know, with such life-changing results um, and shifts within them personally. But mm -hmm. what's, I think, the most magical and what sets us apart from any other professional development really is, is the community of mm. like-minded, passionate, just remarkably brilliant human beings who care so deeply about changing the world through education, the community that's formed, the relationships that are built, that like shared um, vision for using wellness as a vehicle for social change is, is like nothing you could, like it's mm. inexplainable in words. So people leave with best friends for life. They're all still sharing resources, sharing best practices. They're collaborating in their communities together. They're like built, it's like a movement. Um, and so, especially in a, in a profession that can often feel so isolating and, you know, you're behind your closed doors. There's so much at stake. There's a lot of pressure. It can feel alone. It can feel lonely. Yes. Like the community. Isolated. Yeah. And the community that comes out of this is, is a game changer for all of our people. Um, and I want every, every teacher to have access to that level of support and love. So good. I want to close out with a takeaway truth, something for teachers to remember in the week ahead. And I'm wondering if you can share something that you wish every teacher understood about their well-being. I'll take this one from like one of my greatest teachers and advisors and just loves, Parker Palmer, who wrote yes. The Good Enough to Teach. Yes. He and I have conversations all the time. He's been a big mentor of mine and he's come to Breathe for Change trainings and talk to our teachers and I love him dearly. Uh, I th one of the things that he always told me is that self-care is never a selfish act. Mm -hmm. And I think that as educators, when, because we care so deeply about the work, we often feel like self-care is, we don't have time for self-care. It's a burden or or like there's so many other things to prioritize. But in the end of the day, when we're taking care of ourselves, we are taking care of our kids. That is the work that is so critical to build the foundation for um, like high quality teaching and learning. And so my, like my truth telling is like, you deserve, you deserve to take care of you. So create that space take that time for you. Take a, take a few moments to take a few deep breaths in the morning when you wake up. Maybe like allow yourself like even five minutes to set your intention for the day or to journal about things that you're grateful for or to um, 
take a few deep breaths before you're about to react to something that you other like in the future may regret like these moments for you are so important and and can make such a big difference so take them